Welcome to Field Target Tech, Episode 4. We're going to be rolling some pellets today, and I'm Tom Holland. Today, what we're going to be doing is, last week, um, we're going to be rolling some pellets today. Last week, we checked the head size of pellets. So you have, we've weighed them in the past, we've checked the head size, and sorted them in that manner. Now what we're doing is we're going to be rolling the pellets. And what that's going to do is that's going to ensure that the head size and the skirt size are exactly the same size. This way, as I explained last week, you don't have a looser or a tighter fit in the barrel, maybe due to the skirt. We got the head sizes down, but now we want to get the skirts consistent too. And by rolling them, what that does is get the skirts consistent to the head size. Now, what this is a diagram of, again, I am not an artist. This is a piece of glass um, to be used and a carpenter square. And I have that epoxy glued onto this pane of glass. Um, I have half inch nuts glued to the bottom as a base, leaving one out in this corner. And I'll show you the reason why for that when we go to the workbench. Um, and what we do is we pick a spot. I like to pick a spot very high up on the ruler to get the most amount of travel out of it. The longer the pellet rolls, um, the more accurate it's going to be in a given space. So you don't want it this small, realistically, or the, the model that I have. Um, I broke my pane of glass, so I'm using a smaller piece of Lexan just for demonstration purposes only. Um, you would want to use a piece of glass for that um, in a perfect world and a little bit larger of a piece of glass. You want it to roll maybe a foot, maybe a little bit more than that. This is really not enough to be um, practical, but it serves the purpose for demonstration purposes. Um, and what we do is we put the pellet on, the, on a predetermined spot, like I said, very high up, skirt up, head down. And what we do is we angle the piece, and you'll see me do that in the demonstration on the workbench in a few minutes. Um, and it starts the pellet in motion. And the pellet's going to have a natural arc to it, and it's going to stop someplace. Now, I determine what place it is by taking about 20, 30 pellets and rolling them and see where the majority of them end up. And that is going to be my space for the ones I accept. If a pellet has too large of a skirt, it's going to come down here or even do a U-turn. If a pellet has too small of a skirt compared to the head size, it's going to roll out here more. Now, what will happen is if those pellets are shot with that larger or smaller skirt, it might have a different drag rate inside your barrel. You might gain or lose a few feet per second over the nominal uh, size that you pick. My size is going to be 4.52. That's my regular size that I normally use. So for me, anything uh, skirt that's larger or smaller than my compared to the head size is going to be a, a practice pellet. It's meant for plinking or whatever. Um, let's go to the workbench and I'll show you how this method works. Okay guys, uh, this is my piece of Lexan that I have. Like I said, you'd want to use a piece of glass, something a little bit larger than this, and a larger square. Um, on the back of this, you can see I have three nuts glued to the bottom, leaving this one in this corner out. Um, if you can see it, I have my two marks that I made down here. This is my acceptance range. And this mark up here is where I start from. And all you do is you place this on a level surface. You take one of your pellets that you have, put it head down, skirt up, directly next to your uh, square. And what you want to do is, now you want to tilt it a little bit to start that in motion, and the pellet rolls. And as you see, that missed the line a little bit. So this one isn't one that I would use. Go to the next one. Place it, the, the head on the line, and again, start it into motion by tilting it a little bit. You might have to help it a little to get it on its way. And you'll see that one rolls too far as well. So these skirts are too small compared to what I would want for my standard. And we just keep doing that. And you put it in motion again. So I'm 
sometimes it takes a little to get it on its way. And that one's too large as well. And you just keep doing that until you have a bunch of them, just like your head size, uh, all the same. And you, you get it going. And that one ends up right in between my two marks. So this would be one that would, I would accept. I'm going to go through a few more of these and see what kind of other variations that we can get. And it will show you how much they really um, vary. And that one you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but you hear it making a noise while it rolls. Um, that tells me that there's a flat part of the pellet, and you can see that there is a flat spot on this pellet. So you're doing a couple things by rolling it. You're getting the proper uh, skirt to head size, and you can listen for flaws in the skirt by listening to that, uh, that tick, tick, tick noise. And that weeds out some of them uh, even further. So now we get that, and we try another one. And that one's a little bit far. That one just misses it a little bit, so we're going to put that one in the other bend. And you just keep doing this until you have a bunch of them that you accept. See, these are all a li little bit too big. I probably sorted these out before and maybe grabbed some wrong ones, but the, the process is still the same. Just get it to roll. I mean, that one's close, but it still doesn't make it. And basically that's what you want to do uh, to roll your pellets and determine um, that they're all the same head to skirt size. Um, now we're going to go back to the board. Okay guys, that's all there is to rolling them. As you've seen on my demonstration, a lot of my pellets rolled over here. So, uh, again, those are the ones I would use for practice or some other, you know, just plinking around or whatever. I wouldn't use those for a major match or something like that. I would get all the ones that actually sit within my parameters that I have uh, figured out. Um, that's all there is to it. And then after you do this process, you would maybe want to resize some of them, which is going to be next week episode. And next week I'm going to describe how to set up the TR Rob pellet sizer. Um, one thing to give you guys maybe a little bit of a head start, some of the guys that want to follow it and set it up as we go uh, next week on um, next week's video, you want to take all of your head size that is the size that you want, and for me again, it's 4.52. I would take all the 4.51s and smaller than 4.52 as well. Take all of those and put them aside because if you put them through this sizer, it's it's not going to be effective. You don't want the smaller sizes to go through this because um, it's not going to help the smaller size pellet. This will help a larger size pellet. So. We're going to set this up for a 4.52 and larger pellet, where you'll be able to resize a 4.53 or a 4.54, in my case, down to a 4.52. And this device will do it. But a smaller head size will not be effective with this, uh, with this tool. I'll show you how to set this up next week. Um, guys, I just want to wish everyone a Happy New Year. Like and subscribe below. Um, in the future, um, we're going to be doing some pellet comparisons between an Air Arms and a JSB pellet. Um, I was asked to compare those, if I could. And as a lot of people say it's the same pellet, it's just different dyes made by uh, the same company, JSB, makes them for Air Arms. But I'm going to show you up to 10 differences between those pellets that you wouldn't think. Um, and also, down the road, I'm going to be taking apart a Gen 2 Marauder and installing a lane regulator in another few weeks. Those videos will be coming up. So guys, this has been Field Target Tech, Field Target Tech, and I'm Tom Holland. Happy New Year.